Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Britain could be hit with unchecked migrants as plan to scrap census is proposed. Lord Lawson calls for independent review of UK climate predictions. And EU olive sunflower oil surge leads vegetable oil supply rebound. Croatia falls out with new EU partners in escalating row. Plus, European Union bans packets of 10 and menthol cigarettes. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. Based upon the seven-part article series from our website, Brave New Europe, we look at the history of the European Union. In our next episode of Critical Thinking, Trevor Coleman MEP and myself invite you to join us as we look at the beginnings of the Union and consider Jean Monnet's initial vision, then travelling forward through the various treaties and powers transferred as of the Lisbon Treaty. Finally, we will ask... How is the European Union's political power structured and organised, and who represents us, the people? To join us as a guest on the panel, please get involved with our Google Plus community, and you can also watch the show on Hangouts On Air or live from our website. The show takes place next Wednesday, the 16th of October, at 2pm. First, from our homepage. Fears that Britain could be hit by an unchecked wave of migration were raised yesterday after officials revealed plans to abolish the traditional census. The Office for National Statistics yesterday issued proposals to ditch the 200-year-old headcount and use official databases or internet surveys instead. The penny-pinching idea of dropping the questionnaires which are sent to 25 million households in favour of using incomplete government data and partial surveys has prompted anger. Earlier this year, it emerged figures from the 2011 census underestimated Britain's migrant population by 500,000, equivalent to the city the size of Manchester. Campaigners fear the existing inaccuracies will only balloon, leaving ministers unable to form proper migration policy. Now, if the last decade of UK government immigration policy is anything to go by, then forming proper migration policy is clearly an unachievable task. However, let me cut them a little slack rope. Our politicians in Westminster do not have the power to affect migration policy in respect to any of the 28 EU member states. Of course, the usual xenophobic racist labels are used to attempt to bully and taunt anyone who has a view that Britain is overcrowded. What a ridiculous way to construct a counter-argument, especially when you consider that Britain is is historically one of the most multicultural countries on the planet. For 2,000 years, the islands have been inhabited by people from across Europe and Scandinavia. How can you possibly call a people so diverse, racist or xenophobic? You can't. But what it does do is enable politicians to shut down the debate before they get to the part where they have to admit they have given away the right of the British people to govern themselves. In a briefing paper issued today, the Global Warming Policy Foundation reveals that a significant problem has been identified in the UK's officials' UK CP09 climate predictions. Nick Lewis, an independent climate scientist, has published research that shows that because of the way the predictions are prepared using the Meta Office's computer climate model, they are bound to predict fairly high warming in the UK whatever observational data are fed into the process. The UK Climate Predictions Programme informs decisions to invest billions of pounds in climate change adaptation measures across the public and private sectors. The inherent warm bias in the predictions means that much of this spending is probably unnecessary. Andrew Montford, the author of the GWPF briefing paper, said there are potentially billions of pounds being misspent on the basis of these predictions. The government has little choice but to withdraw them pending a review of the way they are put together. 
Well, I have talked about this so much, but the big problem with these models is that they are not taking to, into account solar weather. The models treat the input from the sun largely as a constant, which it is not. It really is worth looking up Suspicious Observer's YouTube channel for more background information on understanding global climate in relation to the solar weather patterns. The bottom line is much of what you have been told over the last 25 years is wrong, and some of what you have been told is plain lies. Production of vegetable oils and fats in the European Union is set to rebound in the next season as sunflower seed and olive oil output jumps, Oil World has said. Sunflower oil production in the EU may top 2.9 million metric tonnes in the 2013-2014 season, which begins on October the 1st. The most on record and 16% higher than the year earlier, the Hamburg-based researcher said in an emailed report, olive oil output will surge 40% from the prior season. Interestingly, given the economic tensions between Russia and the EU over the Ukraine, Output in Russia, the second biggest producer after the Ukraine, may climb 11% to 3.59 million tonnes, helping the country's exports jump 29% to 1.9 million tonnes. A sharp increase in sunflower oil usage is likely to occur in the European Union and China, as well as in many North African and Middle Eastern countries, promoted by exceptionally attractive sun oil prices. It took 10 years for Croatia to become the newest member of the European Union and it has taken just three months for Zagreb to fall out with Brussels in a burgeoning row over the bloc's extradition and arrest rules. The dispute has placed Croatia at the risk of sanctions, losing EU aid money and tarnishing its reputation among its, its new partners. Now, at the heart of what political analysts have dubbed a futile and senseless quarrel is Zagreb's decision to amend its law, just three days before it became the 28th member of the EU on July the 1st, to apply the use of European arrest warrant to crimes committed only after August 2002. Now, come on, we all know that the kleptocrat politicians speak with forked tongue, and you can't tell me that an amendment to internal laws three days before a session was coincidence. That's like trying to tell me that the EU's common fishery policy, rushed through immediately before Britain joined the EU, wasn't a deliberate exercise to thieve, yes, thieve, the fishing rights away from the British people. Oh, and by the way, the EU is doing the exact same thing with the fishing waters off the coast of West Africa. One can hardly blame Zara when the Bruswellian cronies set such a shining example of deception. Sheesh! Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. <music> EU moves to ban menthol cigarettes and take a step closer to plain packaging for tobacco products as it bans packets of 10. The sale of cigarettes in packets of 10 is expected to be banned by 2016 after MEPs voted for tighter restrictions on tobacco use across Europe. Electronic cigarette substitutes, which are increasingly popular as a less harmful alternative to smoking, will be subjected to the same restrict limitations on advertising as ordinary tobacco products under the plan aimed at reducing smoking among women and young people. Linda McCavan, the Labour MP who drafted the legislation, said the new rules would protect children from being targeted by tobacco companies via the lure of attractive branding, small female-friendly packets and flavoured cigarettes. 4,000 British children start smoking each week, and that's a staggering 200,000 new children smokers every year, she, she said. Well, two points on this piece. First, the UK politicians have been using this legislation to slide themselves into the limelight. There have been several mentions of UK politicians talking about discarding plain packaging until results of trials in Australia are in, suggesting that these British politicians have legislated on this topic. Well, as you can see, that's another load of bull, because all this is directed from Brussels. And the second is, this isn't going to work. The more you regulate in an, uh, into effect a prohibition, the greater the kudos for young people to get involved in it. Furthermore, you drive it into the black market, which exacerbates the problem further. 
Information and education are key, and come on, the political machine is easily big enough and controls enough of the media to forge social opinion. The same problem exists with drugs and alcohol, where a black market in drug sales has existed for 50 years or more, and black market alcohol sales production has increased enormously since we joined the EU. These policies do not work. Today in our video library, well, things could be looking up. Apparently this fella, Brooke Riley, who is the Friends of the Earth, Europe, Climate and Energy Programme officer, says, and I quote, It's true, years from now, decades from now, Brussels could be underwater from melting ice. OK, so great. Like it. Love it. Sounds dramatic. The life jacket looks a little premature, but I suppose it could have been worse. I mean, they could have built an ark. It's rather bold to be out and about in Brussels post the IPCC panel admissions that they got it completely wrong. And of course, in today's news, we see that the climate predictions for the UK weather patterns are also slightly, just a wee bit, uh, wrong. I remember back in the late 1970s, the BBC reporting the coming of the next ice age, which would likely be upon us now with expansive polar ice caps breaching land in northern Scotland. Let's face it, this is flat world, pre-Galileo Galileo science. Our models are wrong. We fudge the models with basic constants, ignoring solar weather, galactic precession and planetary interactions. Furthermore, we judge cyclical scales relative to our lifespans and not relative to the universe. We are trying to know the mind of God by looking through a pinhole in the curtain of space and time. A <laughs> little wonder we get it wrong. However, folks, there appears to be a darker agenda at work here because all of this climate and environmental sustainability talk, along with the boogeyman that is the war on terror, has been predicted. In fact, it had been scheduled as far back as the 1950s and documented in policy papers generated by the Club of Rome in the 1960s. Today, we call it Agenda 21, the programme for global governance. So, my friends, be sceptical. Do your own research, and where you can't get the evidence to stack up in your own minds, don't doubt yourselves. Know that it's because the evidence for what is being said doesn't stack up. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>